Hello everybody and welcome to Doing Stuff and Things Utah and COVID Edition. What I mean by that is if you didn't see the first two videos for this trilogy, I tested positive for COVID the other day. This is day three. But don't worry, if you're watching the video and you see me out in the parks in these videos, you should know that I filmed these little intros like months after the adventure has taken place. So I have been responsibly quarantining and really getting a lot of editing done. So this is part three of this trilogy as I mentioned. This is where we finally arrive at our destination, the Coral Pink Sand Dunes. But so far on this road trip, we've seen a couple of really great things. First, we saw the belly of the dragon. We saw the sand caves. And now we're going to go arrive at our primary destination, the Coral Pink Sand Dunes State Park, which sits in South Central Utah, right above the Arizona border. Now it turns out that this park has a lot of fun stuff to offer other than just cooking in the sand dunes. They do have sand boards to rent, sleds to rent, and I believe there's places where you can rent ATVs if you don't bring your own. So these sand dunes offer quite a bit of adventure and fun for someone to have other than just walking around and appreciating the beauty of them. So because I like to ride boards sideways down stuff, I'm going to go ahead and rent a sandboard and really check that off my bucket list for things I need to do on a board. So let's check this out. The Coral Pink Sand Dunes, Utah.
Now, if you're finding the pinkness of these coral pink sand dunes to be a little anticlimactic, like I did and some of the other people I talked to on the dunes, you really can't appreciate the true color of this sand until you really put it side by side with another sand. So for example, this is sand from Goblin Valley State Park, all right? This is the sand from the coral pink sand dunes. So there's the difference and that's more of a pinkish hue, but I know everyone's expecting like a bright grapefruit pink. Not the case, but it's still a neat colored sand. Very soft, very fine, very hot. Now, as I just learned the hard way, you can't just wax a sandboard, put it on, and go down a slope like you can on snow. No, with sandboarding, you have to shuffle it along quite a bit to activate the wax before it'll go. And then, you do have to wax it like every three runs. So, there's a little bit of a learning curve with sandboarding, but it's something to do. And it should be noted, with sandboarding, you don't do it in your shoes. You're either gonna do it barefoot or in socks. Now, most people do it barefoot, but because I have burned my feet on a lot of hot sand back in Kauai, I went ahead and kept the socks on. Personally, I'm glad I did because it was a lot more comfortable that way for walking. I saw a lot of people running around on tiptoes burning their feet. So if you sandboard, consider that. Socks might be a little bit better in hot sand.
Okay, we're back at camp and we did it. We went sandboarding. Now for me, this checks off the last box for all board riding that can be done that I'm aware of. Snowboarding, skateboarding, surfing, bodyboarding, and now sandboarding. So that's a personal accomplishment for me. Hey! But let me tell you, sandboarding is a team sport. You need someone with a four-wheeler or a side-by-side -side or some sort of dune buggy to get you back up those sand dunes. Because every time you ride down, you have to walk back up. And walking up a sand dune sucks. I don't know, it was fun, you know, it was an experience, it was neat to do. If you're in the area, swing by, check it out, rent an ATV, rally the dune buggies all through the sand dunes. You can do that. And I think next time I come, if I come, that's what I'm gonna do instead of sandboarding because yeah, the dune buggies look a lot more fun. So that's it for this adventure. Three part series, we hit some caves, we hit the sand dunes. I'll see you next time.